how y'all doing? Well, the bench is full of uh, multiple unfinished projects, so I don't know if that means I'm living right or living wrong, but I can't seem to get anything finished, finished. And of course, that led me full circle back to the Harbor Freight Portable Electric Pipe Threader. This monster right here is um, something I did a review a while back on. My biggest complaint is how loud it is. My second biggest complaint is that the dies absolutely are horrendous. And you can't, or you supposedly can get replacement blades, but from what I have learned in fooling around with these things is there is no way that they are actually indexed. They are just free floating, having a grand old time inside that cage. What uh, sets the depth is actually this big ring right here, and it is a wonky fit to say the least. So, got myself in a, <laughs> got myself in a little situation, or should I say my framer got himself in a little situation with his sawzall, and cut into a, um, a brand new gas line, and we just had it pumped up with compressed air, so no harm, no foul, except for the pipe. So I thought, yeah, that's easy peasy. I'll run home and I will crank out one. Um, it was a kind of a custom size, like 55 inches, and fired up the Harbor Freight. I thought I would be uh, you know, done with this job in like 15 minutes, and of course, the Harbor Freight tool dies doing what they do best, and they chewed this thing to pieces. So. I don't know if you're going to be able to see it, but it is missing pieces of the tooth throughout here. You know, part of the tooth is missing here, part, or part of the thread, I'm sorry, is missing here, part of the thread's missing there. All the way, this looks pretty good, then we're back to missing. It's always like this with the half inch or the three quarters, this is what it always does. So this is something that I have been wondering and thinking about for a very long time. And I decided to see if I could use the rigid dies. So these are the rigid dies. These are for the hand, um, hand crank bar. And immediately you'll notice they're different. This is an octagon pattern, eight-sided pattern, and this is a round pattern with like a cam. Um, I actually have an old Toledo that my dad gave me, and sure enough, you know, that doesn't fit. But So, the good news is, when I take this and I put it inside the Harbor Freight, like that, it fits. So, my plan is... We're gonna throw this on my homemade weld positioner and we're gonna burn in a couple beads, MIG weld in some beads on both of these flanges, um, maybe two passes. And then we're gonna put it on the bridge port and mill those flats and uh, try it. So I went ahead and I picked up a half inch and a three quarter inch these are the two sizes that I use the most. So let's get started and see how it goes. Well, it's been a couple days and these things finally cooled down. What I ended up doing was I welded uh, two beads on um, each of the flanges and that built me up enough, or uh, I was able to build up enough so that I'll have room to mill the flats. I've got to mill an octagon, kind of kind of like that, into it. So that's all done. And now I have to break down my dividing head slash weld positioner. Um, this, uh, the weld positioner, is one of those tools that I kind of I can't believe I lived without it before it makes welding round things so much easier so much cleaner um, I'm really I'm gonna have to figure out a way just to make a dedicated weld positioner 
because this thing is a bit of a pain in the butt to break down. So I just uh, I took an indicator and ran it along uh, the chuck and that was able to get me within I'd say maybe a thousandth and a half squareness so that's probably way more overkill than I need for this kind of fit but did the math on my, my spreadsheet and it looks like I need to use the 16 hole pattern and I'm gonna have to make two turns and um, plus eight holes this thing is a 20 to 1 and so that's what the Excel gods tell me Well, I know what my mathematic limitations are, and so it's never a bad idea to crank the thing and do a test and make sure that you actually get back to uh, to the top where you think you're going to be. So I'm just going to put a, a little line right there. And let's do the dividing head pokey. All right, so let's see here. And I've already screwed myself up. How about that? <laughs> Looks good. Let's, uh, let's crank the stop down. I'm going to be running a half inch carbide end mill and what my plan is I'm just going to take a like a moderate cut right now and then we'll measure that and see how much we need to take off. Um, and I don't really have a nice place I can indicate from and get a, a measurement so I'm just going to go ahead and like slowly kind of mill the flats and then we'll just keep miking them until we get to where we need to be. Well, it's been an adventure getting to this point. I am about 30 thousandths of an inch um, to where I need to be, but the thing keeps vibrating and kind of moving around in the chuck. Don't really have a good way to support it on this side. So before I take it out, I figure let's put this thing on there and see See if she's gonna fit. Part of it on, anyways. Oh, yeah, there you go. Looks good, so let's pop it out and take a look. Yeah. So I think uh, I noticed on this one these edges are a little more rounded, so I'll probably hit those a little bit with uh, the die grinder. And I'm trying to decide, I might chuck this thing up and see if I can't turn that down. That just looks bad. Alright, let's try it out. This is a, just a scrap piece. I didn't cut it very straight. Just the shit's gonna hit the fan. Well, despite my best efforts, it looks like I had a, one of the cutting blades has moved inward. You know, I took one of these, um, the screws off of it so it would mount in the three jaw chuck. I was really hoping I wouldn't have to readjust these things, but I guess we're going to have to. Hmm. Looks like they just kind of slide around in there. That's not too bad. So I'm going to start with them out. Put the bracket back on. Try to. All right, I got them in there pretty loose. So this is a piece that I got from Home Depot and it's a factory turning, but you know, I've read online, you really can't trust these things too much, but 
that's all we got. So I'll turn her in there. All right, cut the end off. Take two here, hopefully this is gonna work. Tighten her down. Really good. Trash can in place. Your phone's on. Go to the hole. And fingers crossed. Feels pretty good. Got a half inch coupling here. Let's just kind of check it here, see how she fits. Hmm. I think I gotta adjust these the blades more. I'm not getting as much of a taper for some reason. Getting a little bit of a taper, but not much. Let me see if I can adjust the blades and try this again. Yeah, it's been a couple hours, and I'm pretty frustrated, but it is what it is. Um, I opened up the machinery's handbook and, and kind of looked at some of the specs. It looks like I'm in pretty good shape as far as engagement goes. Um, I don't know if you can see there, but I'm definitely cutting a bit of a taper which is about right thread quality is a lot better than before this is the Harbor Freight one you can see some spots there where the teeth or the threads are completely gone so I mean it's making a, a good thread but my uh, my engagement is a little a little deep it looks like the engagement is supposed to be a little less than three eighths maybe about five sixteenths of an inch and my engagement is probably well over three eighths um, but it definitely you know, it, it tightens up um, I don't know if this is just this is what it is with these kind of dies or, or what the deal is you know, I've got them adjusted as far out as possible. You know, I put a piece of pipe in there, I tighten down the screws, and when I tighten down the screws, then you end up having to use a pipe wrench to get the pipe out of the die head. So, you know, I'm at the, I'm at the maximum distance away, or, you know, to make a, a bigger thread, if that makes sense. So, the only thing I can think to do is uh, I've threaded both ends of this pipe. I'm going to put some fittings on them and I'm going to crank it up and slip it down and see if we get any leaks. I always use the uh, T plus two. All right, here we go. I got a hundred psi on this hose. I'll soak it down. Got a little foam down there, but I'm not seeing anything. Got a little thing of water here. Let's dip it in there. I don't see any bubbles, so I'm pretty happy about that. So I think uh, I think we're good to go. I mean, one thing I do notice, I, I just I don't have a lot of extra threads kind of hanging out. The thing I'm wondering is, do they make the dies where they're really tight right now, and as they break in, you know, the dies are going to get smaller, so then your pipe and your thread is going to get bigger. Uh, that's kind of the only thing I can really think of. I mean, Rigid is a really good brand. They seem like they know what they're doing. Um, but there's, uh, I, I'm at the outer limit of what 
you can adjust them too. So I am, you know, this is as big as it gets as far as how far out the dies will go. So hopefully as it breaks in, maybe, uh, maybe I'll get a little bit tighter fit earlier. All right, we got the three quarter die finished and turn that on there. That's pretty good. I paint all my tools red. I've had a hell of a time finding this pipe wrench. Maybe it's I'm just not used to looking for a black pipe wrench. That seems like a stupid idea to paint it black. You know, when you're working underneath the house, you want all your tools to be like fluorescent or some kind of high visibility color. Ah, that feels pretty good. But again, I have uh, almost no extra threads kind of kind of poking up. Oh, it feels pretty tight though. It feels pretty good. Well, if this video feels like a roller coaster ride, um, you're right. It's kind of been up and down for me as well. Uh, they, these rigid cutters make beautiful threads, but the overall design, um, I don't know. It's a little suspect. Hopefully, when it breaks in, it'll get uh, it'll get a little bit better fitting. Um, this is definitely the way to go if you've got one of these Harbor Freight pipe threaders and if you've got one you know the dies are horrific and I have been fighting with that for years you know trying to change up my technique you know backing it off so I didn't get a big chip I, I tried a bunch of things and I could never get a good quality um, thread it was always something you know I don't have a single broken thread and with the Harbor Freight I was always getting broken threads, so I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. Now, with that said, the flat dimension that you need to mill to, this is an octagon, is uh, two inches even. I think mine are a little bit over two, two inches, maybe two inches and 20 thousandths. But if you shoot for like two inches, it'll go in there nice and easy. So hopefully that helps you out. And uh, don't be afraid to get one of these. But just know that you're going to probably have to upgrade your dies. And I think uh, both of these dies together were about $150. And the good thing is with Rigid, you can actually replace these teeth. You can buy a rebuild kit and get new teeth. And they're about $50. So that's probably the way to go. And you'll still come out cheaper than buying an actual Rigid um, motor. Those things are pricey. So hope this helps you guys.